Hello, and welcome back to PilotWrite. In this lesson, we're going to talk about airworthiness and the required documents that have to be on board our aircraft for it to be legal to fly. This information can be found in FAR Part 91, as well as the Pilot's Handbook of Aeronautical Knowledge, Chapter 9-6. Now, we're going to use another one of our mnemonics, and in this case, the word aero. A R R O W. Now we'll list off each one of these items and then we'll go back and talk about them in greater detail. So first we have an A, airworthiness certificate, R for registration, another R for radio license, O for operating handbook, and finally W for weight and balance. If we go back to the top and uh, we see airworthiness certificate. FAR Part 91.203 will give you more information on this, but what we need to know is that an airworthiness certificate will remain valid as long as the aircraft is maintained airworthy. Um, what do I mean? As long as we uh, perform all maintenance inspections on time, comply with all airworthiness directives, and, uh, and so on and so forth, then that airworthiness certificate will remain valid. And it's not uncommon to find an airworthiness certificate dated back to when the aircraft was manufactured. So as soon as that aircraft came off the assembly line, the FAA gave it its stamp of approval, and the airworthiness certificate has remained valid ever since. Also, in Part 91.203, uh, we'll see that this certificate needs to be placed inside the cockpit or the entrance so it is uh, visible and legible to any crew or passengers. So where might we find one of these? Uh, well, I've seen them down on the floorboard near the rudder pedals or on a seat headrest or basically anywhere inside the cockpit uh, that it can easily be seen by anybody on board. An example of a or, uh, airworthiness certificate is here and as we see it includes the nationality and registration or uh, the N number, a manufacturer make and model, the aircraft serial number, uh, the category uh, that it operates in whether it's uh, normal or transport or utility or whatever it might be, uh, and then other information such as the authority and basis of issuance, any terms and conditions, and then the FAA representative's name and his number. Next on our list is R for registration, also found in Part 91.203. Uh, the aircraft must be registered, just like your car or your truck, or if you have a boat or a trailer, they all must be registered. Um, it is registered to the owner, and so if you transfer ownership or buy or sell, then you'll need a new registration. And one thing to keep in mind is that if you find a pink copy, that is uh, temporary and will only be good for 90 days. Uh, this registration is most commonly found uh, right near the airworthiness certificate, so if you find one, you're most likely going to find uh, the other. Here's an example here. And as you can see, one of the aircraft that I flew actually had two registrations, this one for the FAA, and then as well as this one for a state registration. Uh, the next R on our list is for radio license. Now, not all aircraft will have a radio license, and the reason being, it is only required if you plan to fly internationally. So if you want to fly up to Canada for some french fries and gravy, or down to Mexico for a good burrito, uh, then you will have to have the radio license. Also note, this is not an FAA license, but instead it is issued by the FCC. And I've seen them issued to uh, an aircraft or uh, an entire fleet of aircraft, as, uh, as you can see in this example here. And uh, next on our list, we have O for the operating handbook. Uh, part 91.9, we'll talk more about this, uh, but our aircraft must have a POH, a pilot's operating handbook, or AFN, the approved flight manual. Um, and it's going to be very similar, if not identical, to the ones that you have uh, probably used in flight school to do, say, uh, weight and balance computations or find limitations of the airplane. The difference is, is that this operating handbook will be specific to that aircraft, so it won't be just a generic 172 POH, but specific for that aircraft. With the operating handbook comes the requirements of placards, so all those little stickers or notes or placards, if you will, that are around the cockpit that say have uh, flap limitation speeds or altitude limitations or whatever they might be, those placards have to be on board. So if you get in and you see one missing, say it fell off, um, then be careful because legally you cannot fly if those required placards are not on board. And last on our list is W for weight and balance. 
Um, now there's two parts of this I want to talk about and um, the first one is deals with the aircraft by itself so we have to have uh, ba what they call the basic operating weight of the aircraft calculated in its center of gravity um, computated. Uh, so the aircraft with all of its installed components and equipment it all has to be weighed and measured and a weight and balance has to be issued. If we look into the FARs if you want to dig deep part 23 uh, deals with uh, the weight and balance requirements and we'll see these in there um, but know that it has to be specific to the airplane. So where are we going to find this? This is typically going to be in that uh, pilot's operating handbook that we talked about with the O requirement operating handbook and that piece of information the weight and balance is what makes that POH specific to that airplane um, and anytime you change the equipment in it or add something or take something out such as a new radio or GPS unit or if you even want to take the seats out uh, then a new weight and balance for that aircraft has to be calculated with the weight and balance I also want to talk about uh, we look at part 91.103 which uh, pertains to pre-flight preparation. In there we have to have all available information uh, to us and we also have to calculate our performance and our takeoff and landing data. And to get this we need to know the weight and balance of the airplane for each flight. So as we add crew and passengers or fuel and cargo as those change the weight and balance changes and then the performance will also change. Uh, so you want to make sure that you calculate a weight and balance for every flight that you operate. So as a review, Aero, we have A for airworthiness certificate. Um, it is valid as long as the aircraft is maintained in an airworthy state. R, the registration, which is issued to uh, an owner, and a pink copy means it's temporary for 90 days. R, the radio license, which is for international use only and issued by the FCC. O, the operating handbook or a POH specific to that aircraft, and W, the weight and balance of that aircraft, which will often be found in the POH, as well as the weight and balance for each and every flight. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time on Pilot Right.